Hey guys, welcome to SAP Mix Studio Un Biamas, conectando a Ruba con Mundo via video podcasting. Conecta con nos, compartir tu idea y historia para nos inspirar y papi con en abril. SAP Mix Studio es plataforma de podcast na Ruba. Follow nos en Facebook, subscribe en YouTube, offre una plataforma de podcast preferida. Escucha un podcast preferido, qué hora y dónde está. SAP Mix Studio, powered by. Credits, botí una idea. Credits educado y prepara a Abu para ser un empresario exitoso. De business plan, guía personal y préstamo para negocio te con 100 mil forín. Vira por mes doño con Credits. Subway, pasa en Subway para vos sop, salada, rap o flatbread y más fresco. Con 7 localidad Ronte Aruba, no está cerca de Ibo. Subway. Swing Masters. Organizando eventos, conferencias o weddings. Mister de luz, sound, staging, DJ, trossing o flat screen. Swing Masters está claro para hacer una fiesta un éxito. Swing Masters. Y ahora, Sopi Mix Studio, la plataforma de podcast de Aruba, está presentada. Sincerely, Carolinas, powered by Lindy Boutique, Pro Frame, Gelatissimo, Neutrogena y Purina. Hi, happy Monday, happy new week. My name is Carolina and I will be your host for this podcast, Sincerely Carolina. I hope you had a nice weekend and today is an off day. I hope you're enjoying it. This is a pre-recorded episode. So if I make references to today not being Monday, just, you know, it's a pre-recorded episode. I have an awesome guest today. But before we go into that, I want to say thank you to Sapi Mix Studio for allowing me to talk about whatever I want to talk about. But also to my awesome sponsors for making this possible. So thank you, Lindy Boutique, ProFrame, The Shelf. And we have some new sponsors. Yay! We have Crest, um, be pending for the Smiles campaign and we also have Sarah V which is skincare and we will be talking about giveaways about that too later so hello we have here Levi Silvani yes how are you I'm good boom <laughs> awesome okay Levi so we will be speaking Papia English today right I think that's good that's my street awesome all right so Levi for those of you you know of you listening who do not know Livy, can you please tell them who you are and, you know, <laughs> why you are here today a little bit, and then we'll get into our conversation. So, yeah, the short story, the short version is uh, <laughs> Levi Silvani, uh, Yudi Corso, um, artist and creative entrepreneur. Um, most people know me from my music. Mm-hmm. Um, and in terms of music, I happen to be on the island. Islands, actually. Um, Aruba is uh, the first stop in uh, what have been a, I'd say, long overdue uh, return to music. Um, my new album entitled Cheese Mimis is coming up uh, this ex- September. And um, a while ago, I decided or I felt intuitively that I need to do something with my story and uh, what the album represents. And just head to the islands and visit schools, high schools. I uh, think uh, students from the ages of 15. Not necessarily only students, but if, if, we, if we could get a chance to just have like open conversations with the youth mm-hmm. about um, mental health, self-care, and personal growth in general. Um, that was the goal. And so gezegd, so gedaan. Uh, we just bought, bought our tickets, no further plans than just, you know, come to the islands and, and make sure that we at least reach one one person. And um, a lot more than that happened, to be honest. I did uh, so far a bunch of listening sessions, public listening sessions, and we visited uh, three schools. And after this, next week, we're flying to Curacao and Bonaire to do Kay. the same. Awesome. I mean, it sounds like you have had an eventful couple of weeks, days here in Aruba, right? And some eventful coming up 
as well on the other islands. But you mentioned a couple of things, and we'll go into a couple of them. Um, but tell us a little bit about why you think it's so important to have these conversations with the youth, right? I mean, um, the conversations really on mental health and self-care have been growing in so many different scenarios and settings a lot of it happening on social media and um, also kind of like scripted ways on what that should look like, but reality is different. Um, so what made you feel like you really wanted to reach this group in particular and what are you really trying to convey um, to them when you talk to them? Well, first of all, um, I want to answer the latter. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if there's anything that I want to convey uh, per se, kind of like, okay, I, I want to teach uh, yeah, these, these young adults anything. It's more like wanting to, understanding that the need to just have conversations, mm -hmm. but most more so, you know, I think I have um, a better understanding of how to be in listening ear. Nice. And this is uh, due to the fact that I'm a parent now. Um, I have three kids. Um, of which two of them are not my biological uh, children, but they're teenagers, you know. And um, and in my life, um, actually, I've had, uh, you know, someone very close to me, which is also a teenager, um, suffer from, you know, yeah, the, the, the want and the need to, you know, end their own life. Mm -hmm. um, and not knowing that this person was going through these types of you know uh, feelings and, and experiences herself and um and being a person that had my fair share and sometimes still have my fair share of, of struggles in terms of you know anxieties and traumas and and, and even to the point that i wanted to end, m end my life also you know and when you're confronted with that and while you're s you have such a close relationship or you think you have such a close relationship with someone and you know someone that well and when you get to know what's actually happening below the surface. Um, it makes you wonder. And I can, can imagine that people that don't have, you know, maybe the innate feeling of, of uh, um, I need to do something about this. Because I think, in general, most of us react with, with or disbelief or shock or mm -hmm. even, you know, the, the need to avoid anything that is uncomfortable. And for me, I feel like I had um, the, the blessing to be able to not only be on the end of, you know, the one dealing with someone that's struggling, but also being someone that struggled basically my whole life since I was a teen. Mm -hmm. um, so being in that position to know the AB, s like, both sides, mm -hmm. I think um, it's only fair to do whatever I can to create a safe space or at least create a, a, a moment where empowerment and motivation can, can, can happen, basically. Yes, and you said a couple of very interesting things, right? It's, um, and I... We sometimes have to also be honest um, as to our own capabilities. So a lot of people will will tell you, especially when something serious happens, like, I'm here for you, just let me know if you need me. But I think that very few people truly understand what that would really mean in practice if you are going to be there for somebody who, for example, is at the point of, you know, wanting to end their life, that that is the only outcome that they see. Yeah. Um, so I think that's also very important, you know, for the people that are listening, maybe if they themselves are not necessarily struggling, that the moment you become a listening ear, one, you know, there are things that might not be in your control, you may not be able to fix it, um, but also being aware of your own capabilities and being honest as to that as well. Um, because it might create false expectations for the other person wanting to receive a certain form of help. Yep. You know, um, how, what has been your experience? And, you know, you can share from your own personal experience, but also talking to others where you have seen situations or felt situations where, you know, you, like you said, you 
think that somebody has got your back or you know somebody well and then a situation presents itself and then you're like oh wait hold on yeah in my in my personal situation i've never expected anyone f- anything from anyone okay um and i and i'm not here to kind of uh promote that at all mm-hmm. that was just my experience you know mm-hmm. since i was a kid what helped me was to and, and when i say help i'm not talking in a positive way i'm, I'm talking about you know forging my own path mm-hmm. um what has been my go-to response to life and and in general anything that happened within my life was to close off and but that came with a a genuine sense of do not uh, make it anyone's responsibility for not being able to show up for something that they did they don't even know Mm -hmm. why because if i'm the one just leaving the premises and closing myself off I can't expect anyone to even know how to support me. Mm -hmm. So for me, um, I don't feel that I've ever had to struggle with, you know, people, you know, um, uh, I guess say letting me down or or, or something like that Mm -hmm. at all. Actually, Um, for me, it was more letting myself down and in many cases. But I can speak on, you know, having the feeling of letting someone else down because, mm-hmm. you know, I wasn't even aware of that person going through that. And that made me realize that um, it is very much possible to be living in the same house with someone that you believe you have an amazing relationship and you speak on a, a, on a daily basis and, and try to create moments to, to dive even deeper in, into just uh, more than... You know the kuches and kalfjes, as mm-hmm. they say in Dutch, um, and still manage to not really know what's happening in this person's life. Yeah. Um, that was a, an awakening for me personally to realize that um, it's also sometimes very impossible to, you know, from a point of I- intention mm-hmm. to support someone if you y- you yourself don't even know how to support. Mm-hmm. You know, and even if you find out what's happening with someone, and even if you want to support, I also believe that sometimes it's it's near impossible to support if you if you don't if you literally don't know. So mm-hmm. therefore, I believe at the core of everything, it doesn't matter on which side you s- you you stand. Uh, it's very important to always uh, educate yourself as much as possible, and I think essentially. Um, I think the most practical thing to do always is is start with openness. You know, um, openness, and I say it very intentionally, openness and not conversations, because even in conversations, uh, you know, conversation plus expectation plus uh, the lack of clarity can also... Yeah. Reroute to, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, disappointments, but openness somehow, when you're open about what you know and what you don't know, that makes it easier, you know, for a conversation to 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 be healthier. Even though even sometimes when you have to say, like, listen, I'm not the person to be, you know, doing this mm-hmm. with you or for you right now. Mm-hmm. You know, and it could it could be it could hurt sometimes both parties, but if that's the truth, that's a v- that's a stronger and a stronger and healthier point of departure. For sure. So that's why I say I think at the at the very core at the very start of things for me, to my opinion, I believe openness is is very important. Yes, and um, you know something that you that you said that's very important to address and and for us to really sit with that is. <coughs> Um, indeed, you can be sleeping next to somebody and still be unaware because it requires a lot of vulnerability for the person who is going through something to open up about it. Sure. But, you know, d- being vulnerable is one, but also having the tools to be able to communicate. Not everybody, you know, has developed the skill to put into words what emotions they are feeling, you know, what are they are going through. So, yeah. um it's really nice to see that more conversations are happening with younger people. So they start to develop these skills at a younger age. Um, 
but also I think another thing that you said about being open it's also about being fair and honest I I talk to a lot of parents a lot because I'm also involved with children and youth and parents tend to paint pictures for their children that everything's fine and they're like you know they got it all together and I'm not saying that you should go and like tell your children everything that you're going through but it's also very important for them to know when you go through hardships when you are struggling with something so that they know that those are common emotions and things that happen in humans so that they don't feel that the moment something is not going okay, that it's too weird for them to talk yeah. about it. Yeah. Um, and something that you posted a couple of days ago and during one of your school tours that I thought was really important and really nice to see that and, you know, that they told you this, that the youth told you this, is that they feel dismissed by exactly. adults. Um, and although we all <laughs> were teenagers at some point, it's it's very interesting to see how quickly we kind of forget <laughs> how intense things might feel at a yeah. certain age, right? Um, and also because times do change, so different stressors and motivators um, are happening, so we may not be able to relate to today's youth and what is you know causing them anxiety or stress um, or the pressures that they're having, um, yet even if they do choose to some way somehow reach out in whatever way they can yep. they're often dismissed yep. when you were having these conversations and they said this um what did you think about that or how did you feel about that you know and maybe even as an adult because adults also dismiss other adults it's not just you yeah. know mm-hmm. yeah so like again i'm i'm very big on um I think my, my my life mantra and as cheesy it, as it may sound stems out of something I've coined myself, uh, which is uh, based on the philosophy of cheese mm-hmm. mimis that everything you need you are and everything you need you are doesn't dismiss others. It doesn't say like oh uh, only you matter and quote unquote fuck the rest. Mm-hmm. Um, everything you need you are starts with you realizing that. Um, it is your responsibility from the moment that you are aware, because at a certain point in, in, in your life, I don't know exactly what age that is. F- to me, it doesn't really matter because it seems like with 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 the day, kids become more more mm-hmm. aware and at a younger age. So to me, it doesn't really matter at what age, but as soon as you are aware of yourself, I think it's the responsibility of everyone else that's lived long enough to be in the position of influence to a younger community. It's important to, s- to teach ourselves that, hey, we have a responsibility to ourselves primarily, you know? And um, so my, how I approach moment, moments like that is, um, it's empathy because I can relate. I totally relate. And, and, and one thing was very beautiful to, to be able to share with these kids is the fact that as you rightfully said just now, like sometimes we forget that we were in that same, you know, position, but Mm -hmm. what does that tell us? What it tells us is that everything, um, nothing lasts forever. So everything shall pass. Like this moment just passed, Mm -hmm. you know, what you're struggling with, with will pass. Maybe another step will be open taken over by a different struggle but i think struggle is a part of life but to remain a victim of your struggles from a point of perspective Mm -hmm. i think is something that we all have personally a responsibility uh, um, to ourselves to decide how we position ourselves within you know the life situation that we're going through of course, I have all respect to there's certain conditions that people struggle with that that doesn't really leave out enough, you know, let's say, space to say, oh, I'm, I'm independent, you know, because, mm-hmm. for instance, I have a friend, he, he just lived a normal life uh, up to his twenty 25th uh, birthday, something like that, just uh, became a father and few weeks later uh was diagnosed with ALS now now he's you know just 
you know, immobile, mm-hmm. sitting in a chair and communicating with a computer. What do you say to someone like that? But even a person like that have, has told me a lot about, you know, taught me a lot about our, the power that we have within ourselves to, to, to choose how we want to, you know, stand in life, even if you can't physically stand anymore. Mm-hmm. And that's a, uh, um, there's a book and I don't know if you have read it, but I always recommend it to everyone. Um, it's called Tuesdays with Maury and it's about a professor who also gets, um, ALS wow. and, you know, it's a it's a very heavy diagnosis in this yeah. case and like you said you know some situations and it's not that it takes away for from how you're feeling but some situations um give you more hope to look forward to than others yeah. with something with als the reality still to this day is that you know your your life is literally going to an end at a yeah. quicker pace yeah. um but it's what are you going to do with the remaining time that you do have yeah. and and what responsibility are you going to take of your own emotions at that point and um we have a tendency in our culture with these stories is that we pity people in the first place right when somebody is going through something um really heavy we pity that situation so you know if we think about things like suicide even um people are like ah pika you know, those are like the first words that come out of people. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, all, of, all of these these emotions are fair and you can be feeling them. It's more of like, okay, but are we providing spaces for people to take responsibility of like their own emotions where they are aware enough? And you said something that's, that's pretty interesting that um, nowadays, because of social media and the internet, children are coming you know much smarter in certain areas self-awareness is one of them but then what do you do with that especially if they're dealing with adults who are not even self-aware themselves um so i think that's that's an interesting conversation i like how you said that you know it's like you can't expect something of somebody who cannot relate or feel that exactly yeah and that's 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 why i say i'm big on this empowering aspect because all i can do is is Mm -hmm. listen to these kids and share my experience and 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 try to do that in in an empower empowering way Mm -hmm. why because at the end of the day like what do you say to a kid that that has parents that has their fair share of reasons why they can't emotionally be there for mm-hmm. their child. What do you say, say to a kid like that? You know, and then, and then I feel like in this moment there's no time to waste. All I all I can do is start with helping this child to realize what her gift and how what her power is. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's that starts with understanding that there's power there's magic in openness Mm -hmm. and that openness doesn't mean okay just go out and about and just talk to everyone randomly but it starts to like accepting that you are not okay Mm -hmm. with with some aspect of your life Mm -hmm. and parallel that with a hunger to not remain that that position why because that is a temporary thing Mm -hmm. you know even if it lasts, it feels like it lasts forever. It it's it's series of things mm-hmm. because that's life, mm-hmm. you know. So, one of the practical things I've I've been uh, talking about is how like journaling has helped me okay. in my life, you know, and and not just journaling for the sake of journaling, but journaling because I needed I bec- in. St- Despite the fact I didn't know who to trust, I needed to get it out there. Mm-hmm. And after it was out there, even in there, mm-hmm. meaning the notebook, after that, I went a step further and turned it into music. So my music is literally journals written to myself, mm-hmm. notes to self. But then the moment I opened up to the world, not only did, does it inspire others, but it also makes you realize that, hey, people 
even though the people you would love to embrace you for being open are not the ones to likely to do so, but do not underestimate the power of what being open can do. Mm-hmm. Because there's there's always someone listening. Yes. You know, so that's that's the most practical thing I've been trying to to share through my own experience because I really truly profoundly believe that it is possible and I also think that it's undeniable to say it's not true because my music has stemmed out from that that place of hurt mm-hmm. you know it's it it comes from that practice just opening up and 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 being actually surprised by how the world you know communities has you know, not only embraced my music and embraced my p- the person I am, but also found, like, tools within that, you know, my personal stories, mm-hmm. my personal experiences. And I think that could be very, very empowering when you tell kids that, hey, listen, your struggle is not, not only something that's difficult right now, but it's also something that can save a life on the other side, you know. And, um, yeah, so that's that's... That's kind of my approach. And I think that's a, that's a really nice um, way of putting it and communicating it to others too. Like you said, um, the chances that you are the only one going through, you know, that that you're going through are very slim. So, but if, if you do not reach out, you won't know. And, you know, the, the beauty and the good thing, you know, silver lining of these things are that once somebody has gone through it they may be able to help you and you know help you in the sense that you know nobody can pull you out of something like that but they can help you with tools give you ideas like something like you just mentioned something like journaling and turning that into into music for example but also talking recording i know people that do voice memos just for themselves of like an emotion that they're feeling or yeah video themselves and just like just save it so that they can process and go back to like okay now that i have a clear mind let me see where that emotion exactly. was coming from um but that can be scary and th- and i'm sure that for for the youth that's also scary the moment that you know they start getting intrusive thoughts and i know that you have been in that situation and i have personally also felt intrusive thoughts and it can be very scary and intrusive thoughts you know come in so many different ways ways and in waves so it can go from start from you know you're a failure or you're not doing good enough and you know this is going to suck and um you were not good at this thing that you just did all the way to maybe life will be better if you don't exist Mm -hmm. so there's different um levels of this but the moment you start identifying them we tend to dismiss them um as to pinning them down and be like okay where is this coming from? Is this really true, right? And doing that. So thank you for having these conversations with the youth because they're important. Yeah. And I do hope that more of these conversations happen and um, not just from the place of like, okay, self-care and make sure you sleep enough and drink enough water. Exactly. And Because exactly. these things are important. I am not saying they're not. But also being vulnerable and talking about the ugly that comes with it yeah. and the sad and the dark that comes with it because that is where usually people can identify exactly. and find themselves. Yeah. I think, I think you know, I'm glad you said that because, like, in my personal experience, mm-hmm. and I, I've at one of the last schools I visited, I think it was uh, Colegio Arubiano, Arubano, it was, I had a really interesting conversation with, with a very small group and I told them that sometimes even those like the checklist Mm -hmm. the health checklist that we go through becomes the the exact thing that you know pushes us even deeper into you know our unhealthy habits or unhealthy ways of looking at ourselves Mm -hmm. why because when you are hungry to, you know, better yourself or, you know, f- experience some type of change within your, si- your, your circumstances and your situation, um, you seek for 
practical steps. And sometimes, especially if you don't want to share it with anyone and want to talk about it, you tend to look things up by yourself and try to do it by yourself. And nine out of ten times, what you get are seven steps for <laughs> 21 <laughs> steps for this. And yep. And the moment you find yourself not being able to drink water like that or sleep the, the hours they say mm-hmm. you, you know, or meditate or do yoga or eat all of a sudden have a complete, you know... Specific diet, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> that can be detrimental. Mm-hmm. Like, extremely detrimental. And that's why, for me, honestly, I really don't care about how other people would look like it, but this is m- my truth and my opinion. I believe it starts with the curiosity within. Mm-hmm. And turning that into being open to yourself first and foremost, because I believe that when you start practicing that, it bec- it's like a muscle. You become better at it. Mm-hmm. And the better and the opener you are with yourself, the easier it's going to get to open up to others. Yes, you for know? sure. So I've had people come up to me or write me after I opened up about my, my mental struggles back in uh, October last year mm-hmm. and talked to me about oh, oh, oh wow I, yeah that takes a lot respect blah, blah, blah. but like before that ever happened or before I even considered doing that it took me a long time to be able to get to that place with myself mm-hmm. you know so I'm at the place where I'm comfortable enough to be open to myself about myself where I am and where I'm not. And if if that's not a place of de- departure, and I don't think it's the only, but no, of course. I do believe that it's a very, very healthy place to start mm-hmm. in a world where there's so much information and everyone knows best. No, no one knows better than you where you are at mm-hmm. in this moment mm-hmm. with yourself and what you feel. And I think the key is to learn how to or articulate you mm-hmm. but start with doing that by doing it you know everything you need you are start doing it with yourself yep. you That's know self-introspection Exa- exactly yes. and um yeah and i mean that's that's what i know of mm-hmm. and that's what i can vouch for but again i'm not here to teach anyone you know how to because yeah I don't the believe steps in it. yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. i don't really believe in it but i i do believe in um, we have to go back to the place where we realize what what's our wha- our um, what we are. We are life. You know, mm-hmm. we need to step away sometimes from who we are and and step more into what we are. We are life, and when you understand, just sit back and observe what life is, how life expresses itself. You know. Mm-hmm. All the shifts, turns, the curves, and, 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 and changes, and the moods, and the swings. All of that that you see outside of yourself, in nature, and whatnot, lives within you as well. But when you think of life, you think of this, you know, endless potential. You know, ultimate potential. That's what we are. Mm-hmm. And um, I love to believe that, you know, that's a very, very important reminder to 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 anyone that's struggling or not because even even though you can't relate with you know dealing with mental health or not you might know someone that needs you to remind them that you know you are life mhm that's what i think and um, that's the thing i think that we for some reason although we are talking more about it we still perceive people who are going through you know a heavy period as something very distant while we all go through it and we go through it in different ways but we still perceive it as something distant so i do want to ask you um about you know your decision to come out last year have a very vulnerable moment you know especially because you are a public person so of course this comes with um with added pressure scrutiny and questions um but you made a decision to go public with this 
you know, this, this time of your life that you were going through, um, but also creating then a space to talk further about it. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about making that decision, but also maybe what it was like, you know, that feeling from yeah, then having so everybody. Yeah. So yeah. L- let me, I want to start with how it felt afterwards. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to start by saying I almost had the opportunity to foresee some of what was potentially going to happen, especially the negative. Okay. Because I think uh, for as a professional and as a public figure, you have to, I don't know if, if, if the right word is risk management, but I, I do believe that it's important to understand your responsibility and what, what, um, and to kind of, you know, be aware and mindful of what, you know, your actions can um, create. So it was very difficult. Not, not for the fact that I've opened up. But it was very difficult to see how to see how people brush it off or how people okay. um, can, like you said, scrutinize it or even say like, oh, I had literally like I had people in the position to, you know, take this narrative and push it even further and and use the opportunity to open up the conversation even more, literally went like, oh, this is a marketing stunt for an album. Mm -hmm. And I had days that I took it very, very personal and that it really, really hurt. You know, for many reasons that I don't think it's even relevant anymore to Mm -hmm. dive into. But for the sake of this conversation and your, your question, um, it was beautiful yet painful to be able to feel what how it feels you know for instance what these kids might feel sometimes you know it's like oh people assume that because you're an artist and <laughs> one of my colleagues said last uh last week oh people assume that because you're an artist you look good you stand on on, on, on big stages and you have a couple of great songs that you don't have anything to you know worry, worry about, about. Mm-hmm. and that's that's how it felt okay. you know it felt like one day you uh, are accepted because um what you do is acceptable or you or you make a positive song stay in your lane the moment you try to do something that people don't expect it's like ah uh, this is not real you know, and who are we to judge what's real or what's not, you know? And and I'm happy to have lived long enough to realize that everyone has, has an opinion and may have an opinion. And in a world where it's basically the opinion world, we're living in an opinion world, mm-hmm. you know, because that's what the, what the internet does. So it's two things. If you have an, uh, if you have you know, something against the opinion world and the opinions of everyone of the world, then you literally have to not be yep. here, you know, mm-hmm. or, or not be on the internet, but it's, it's unavoidable. Mm-hmm. So to me, it was, that's why I say I needed to do that risk management or have that self-aware moment with myself and, and with my team and and talk about it and 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 really kind of predict what are the different you know responses and feedback feedbacks that we might get um so i guess what i'm trying to say is there there was two sides of it you know there was a personal side because b- long before i even open up to my team which f- to them it was also obviously a surprise mm mm-hmm. But there was that phase before, and that phase is a personal, intimate mm-hmm. moment. That's a personal transition before it even gets to the point that the world gets to see it. You know, so um, if I can go to that moment with you, with you, 
um, I think that was how I felt my whole life. You know, like since I was a kid, I felt like people are always watching and people are always like looking up to me. You know, and that's due to the fact of how, you know, I was raised. Raised in a family where we were, you know, very known within the community due to my parents' career as a, as musicians. And, um, but I never really liked being in the spotlight like that. Not, mm -hmm. not as a, you know, a famous person, but also just in general, I don't really like being on the spot. Um, but I always had the feeling, though, that the moment I say something, something happens. It's like people listen, right? Mm -hmm. And for most of my life, I tried to run away from that, run away from that. And um, so last year, I think somewhere around this time, at the beginning of the year last year, um, I felt that that was the next thing I needed to do because um, whenever we ha would have the chance to dive deeper into my backstory you'll understand more but like for me my evolution was one of you know trying to fit the expectations of or what I thought people expected of me mm -hmm. as, an, as an artist to one of being a person that also makes music you know, mm -hmm. um, and just living life in, in, in a way that works for him, you know, and now I'm that guy, you know, and, and, and being that person, um, I had to make peace with the fact that, okay, now I'm, I'm not just only the person that when, when, he, or when he talks, people listen, but I actually have a platform, I actually have an audience, I actually have influence within the communities, and not saying something about, you know, my truth, which is something that everyone um, might relate to, is literally running away from something that I've, I'm, you know, I've, I've, I'm wired to do. Mm -hmm. You know, so it wasn't, it was pretty much a no-brainer. The, 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 the challenge, challenge was more like, if I will accept the challenge, yes or no. And like I said, for me, I, I made it a sport to, to be successful in life, not successful financially or in my career, or, but just be successfully at becoming a better version of myself because, because back in the days, I used to hate myself. I used to dislike myself. Mm -hmm. And that was translated into, you know, a hunger and a desire to really, you know, change my circumstances and change my life uh, into a better life. And, um, yeah, that sharing that video was me, you know, being true to, to not even being true, but, like, um, stepping up to, you know, what I know I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Even Honoring that. Really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, because if I saw myself as a, as a, you know, an artist, a musician, probably I would have written a song about it, but I didn't write a, s write a song about it. You know, I, I just share about it in every way possible, not through a homemade video that, w that was sent to my parents the mm -hmm. moment I opened up in my life for the first time to family, mm -hmm. you know, and took it to another level and r wrote a whole you know, album and worked with people, you know, about this transition in my life, about this whole story, you know, and now going on this tour, visiting schools. So for me, it's not that video or it's it's how I'm bi I've been living every day of my life, you know, ever since. Mm -hmm. And ever since, it's not ever since that video, but ever since I realized that I can't, you know, continue to live like this anymore. Mm -hmm. So it was a very conscious decision. And I think that... That it's also important for everybody to to know that, like you said, it's it's about you and openness with yourself, but also that you have to at some point make a decision with yourself. You have that responsibility with yourself to decide whether or not you like your life and what are you gonna do about that. Yeah. And 
Yeah, and like you said, honoring also the reality that you do have a platform. And um, yes, of course, you get to pick and choose. Doesn't mean that because you have a platform, you all of a sudden have an extra responsibility, but also deciding that this will honor that person that you are and want to become better at. Yeah. Um, so thank you for that. So let me last question, because of course our time is running up a little bit and I do feel like we do have to have some follow-up questions um, and a follow-up conversation. I think also maybe after your album is out for everybody That's to true. listen, then definitely we can talk a little bit in depth more about that. But what can we expect, you know, as, as it is, um, as you're starting to talk about it a little bit and getting everybody hyped up for it, um, what can we expect? From the album? Yes, and, and from, from, from you as well, what yep. comes yeah, with this I next phase? <laughs> <laughs> it, well, I guess from me it's difficult to say because this, what you hear is what you're getting, you know. Um, um, so I don't have, uh, like, any plans with, you know, what I'm going to do next. I, I just know what I'm doing now. And what I'm doing now is is just really focus on um, sharing my gift, you know, and in in any way possible. Um, and the album is is a represent representation of that. Um, and specifically, what people can expect of the album. Um, well. I think the best way for me to explain this is that this album has been a, an, an important tool in my life, you know, because this, this album has been sitting on the shelves for almost two years now. Um, and in the past two years, I've, I've, I've seen, you know, the deepest moments in my life some of the deepest moments in my life. And this album has been a soundtrack for me in many of the moments where I felt like, okay, this is it. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever that meant. And um, so in terms of what the content of the album is, this album, I think it's, it is a life-changing body of work in terms of, you know, messaging and, and what it, what it what it holds and what it what it can bring to the table in terms of music <laughs> i think uh it's a very refreshing and very surprising uh, body of work i think uh, what i'm what i'm doing sonically and lyrically is something that my current audience probably might not expect okay but at the same time it will feel at home mm -hmm. um um and this this album is just amazing, and, and <laughs> yeah, it, it, it truly, mm -hmm. truly, truly is. I think um, I've I've had the opportunity to really work on this album the same way you know one would build their first house, you know, because to me, in many ways, it feels that way. Like I had the chance to take my time and really create and build something with a group of people that I respect and love but people that I could have been truly, truly open with, you know, so because this was a very therapeutic process and nice. therapeutic project. Um, so definitely an album that you can vibe and dance and, and just jam to, but at the same time, it is something that in the moments in life that you really need a pick me up and, and you know, a shift, it, it's definitely that tool, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, at this point, it's not something I believe anymore, but it, I've seen I've seen it in, 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 in practice. I've seen how people re react to the album and what it does, and it's magical. And I'm very, very excited to see how this pans out. So, release date... Well, release date, uh, I'm not disclosing yet. Uh. Release month is September <laughs> 2022. Okay, okay. okay. But um, it's it's definitely coming now um, because I've already, you know, 
said it, so now I have to commit to it. And yes. I, and I'm committing to it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So for everyone who had a chance, I'm sure that you enjoyed the listening sessions. Um, you will not have more in Aruba um, for now, but my guess will hear if you will. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm actually hoping to okay. do a, a lot more. Awesome. But for now, there's uh, um, that was it, basically. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yes. Okay, baby. So I have this thing that I do um, with my guests, and it's called kindness cards. And I usually pick a couple and then see how the conversation goes. Okay. And then I decide which one I think fits best. Um, but this one says, you light up the room. And I think that when we think about lighting up the room, we think of like something you know, very bubbly or loud or, but in this case, it's just, you light it up in the sense of like creating that light bulb and shining light on, you know, those very simple things that we all carry, but sometimes neglect mm. to honor and um, be accountable for. So that's why I decided that this card fits you. <laughs> I can keep this? Yes, it's for you. It's super, I like it. <laughs> it made me smile right away. Yay! Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I, I decided to start doing this and, and also because, um, you know, what I hope to achieve with these conversations on Sincerely Carolina is that curiosity, right? So hopefully um, a thing or two that you said resonates with our listeners and, you know, maybe encourages them to think a little bit further on that yep. um, and start their own conversations with those around them. So I do hope that... Um, this did that for them. Um, I also want to encourage all of you listening to head over to Liv Silvani's website, which also has some interesting information on there. Um, I like what you did with that too. Um, I think that's 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 really important and um, information should be accessible. Yeah. Um, so thank you also for that. Is there anything else that you want to leave us with before we close off this episode? Well, I, s I think I said a lot, but, um, <laughs> but I, I do want to say again, um, I think two things that really worked for me and that I, I feel that, you know, I can, I can share with others is, you know, curi curi curiosity towards yourself, you know, internal cu curiosity. Mm -hmm. That's one, you know, really like buy one of those big flashlights and whenever you get the chance to just walk within your thoughts and just without without judging and just just take a look mm -hmm. take a look at your thoughts take a look at your feelings and and do it as much as possible the more you do it the more you learn about yourself and because we spend a lot of time learning about everything else and sometimes everybody else but we don't know ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we, we skip ourselves, the, the yeah. self that we are within the conversation with another person, but that no one hears, mm -hmm. only you, you know, are you listening? Are you paying attention? Are you curious? So that curiosity and the other part is, and then start practice, practicing openness, you know, being open to, towards yourself and allow, allow what you discover to be you know, to be there. It doesn't mean that it has to stay that way. But if you can't even accept that that's where you are, how would you know where you're going or if you've, mm -hmm. if you've gotten there? You know, so those two things, internal curios curiosity and just openness. Thank you so much for that. I really enjoyed our conversation. Um, I really enjoyed many of the things that you said. You know, these are things that resonate with me as well. And um, I love that you are bringing it forward, you know, with your platform and your music to the youth. So thank you for that. Keep doing that. Um, and again, I hope that we have more conversations. Um, again, for all of you listening, you know that we have usually Learn and Win Wednesdays. So I don't know if I'm going to do like a quiz necessarily of our conversation of today, but I'm going to see if I can post like a question or something. Um, and then, yes, of course, you can win fun prizes <laughs> 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 because I know some of you really enjoy that. But I also enjoy that um, 
that moment of interaction with my listeners. So again, Levi, thank you. Thank you to Sapi Mix Studio for allowing us to have this conversation to my awesome. Yes. (laughs) No. And um, I hope you enjoy the islands further. And, um, you know, we will we will chit chat a little bit afterwards about maybe um, having more of these youth conversations. So thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Have a nice week. And thank you to my awesome sponsors again, Lindy Boutique, ProFrame the Shelf, Crest and Sarah V. I will see you all again next week, and we will start the parenting series then. So I'm excited about that as well. All right. Bye. Ciao, ciao. (laughs) Sincerely, Carolina is powered by Lindy Boutique, ProFrame, Gelatissimo, Neutrogena, and Purina.